Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Where do people go when they disappear? We're not talking about those folk who have every good reason and understandable motive to drop from sight. No, we mean people who were on their way somewhere and who never showed up and have never been heard of again. And the people we're talking about were solid, substantial, dependable people. A well-known judge, a famous aviatrix, a United States naval vessel, a patrol of Air Force bombers, a commercial airliner, and others too numerous to mention. What happened to them? Is there an explanation? Our mystery drama, The Triangle, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mercedes McCambridge. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and by the Florida Orange Growers. I'll be back shortly with Act One. a rather well-defined area in the Atlantic Ocean. It is shaped like an isosceles triangle. At one point lies Miami, at the second, Puerto Rico, and at the third, Bermuda. And for that reason, it is known as the Bermuda Triangle. Over the years, at least a hundred planes and ships and over a thousand people have disappeared into its depths without leaving a trace and for reasons that have never been satisfactorily explained. Hello there, Miami. This is your routine check from American International Flight 7, old Lucky 7, inbound from near old London. we are now 215 nautical miles from your first outer marker, bearing 090. Speed. Hey, hold it. Hey, Mark, what's that vibration? Mark, that vibration. Hey, Miami. Miami, our position is... The compass is going crazy. It's spinning like a top. We're going down. Pull up, Mark. Mark, help me pull up. We're going down. Miami! I don't know what's wrong, but he's pulled down. Honey, he's pulling us down. We don't have to hear the tape again, Lieutenant. I'm very much afraid, Pete, that we'll just have to chalk this one up. There were 110 people aboard that plane, and we'll just have to... Oh, excuse me, sir. Admiral Ingram's headquarters, Lieutenant Nelson. Uh, one moment, sir. It's uh, it's Commander Bates. Well, now, you know what he wants, don't you? He wants to know if I'm ready to release the word. Will you talk to him, sir? I'll call him back. Okay. Uh, the Admiral will call you back, sir. Are you ready to call off the search, sir? Damn it. 110 people. Yes, sir. We knew his bearing. We could practically pinpoint his location. We combed that area as much as you can hope to comb water for five whole days. We organized the greatest peacetime assemblage of ships, planes, and men. Yes, sir. Now, don't interrupt me, will you, Pete? I have to keep saying these things to square my own conscience. I understand. Oh, don't be so damn understanding, Lieutenant. Fight with me. Argue with me. Convince me there's something else I can do. Another approach, another attack, another plan of action. Admiral... You know those stories in the papers, on the air, about the Bermuda Triangle? How planes and ships disappear? I know, it's all nonsense. Well, you heard the pilot. The plane was just pulled down from the sky. A sudden electrical disturbance can account for practically anything. Uh, that's public relations. I'll talk to them. Uh, Lieutenant Nelson. What? Uh, repeat that. Yes. Yes, the Admiral will leave at once. Sir... Sir, it's unbelievable. Don't editorialize, Lieutenant. Just report. Yes, sir. They, uh, they have a survivor. That's impossible. A young woman. No one could survive five days in the water. But they got her, sir. She's aboard the carrier. Well, Miss Roberts, I'm Admiral Ingram. This is Lieutenant Nelson. The doctor said you could talk to us. Yes. It, uh, must have been a harrowing experience. Uh, I, I'm all right. Yes, I see that. Miss Roberts, you know you're the sole survivor. That's what I've been told. Can you tell us what happened? I don't know what happened. Well, surely you can remember something. I don't remember anything. 
Yes, well, uh, perhaps this isn't a good time to talk to you. No, that doesn't matter. I just can't tell you anything. Uh, Miss Roberts, your plane went down five days ago. Yes, according to the calendar. <clears throat> and uh, you were just picked out of the water this morning. Yes. And you claim to be Judy Roberts. I am Judy Roberts. The Judy Roberts, who was a passenger aboard American International Flight 7 from London to Miami on June the 15th. Yes. Admiral, uh, may I talk to you a moment? How could she live five days in that shark-infested sea? Well, if she was lucky. She could survive without food, without water? Obviously. Well, why doesn't she look it? Why isn't she all shriveled up and dehydrated? Why isn't her skin burned and raw? Why isn't she hysterical or delirious? She looks as if she just stepped out of a heated swimming pool at a country club. Yes, I thought of that, too. We sent her fingerprints for confirmation. We checked out her teeth with a dentist. She is Judy Roberts. Miss Roberts, why won't you tell us what happened? I told you I don't remember. Well, could you tell us everything you do remember? I was sitting in my seat. I'd fallen asleep. Yes? And I was conscious of a loud, roaring sound. I don't know if I was still asleep or awake. I had the frightening feeling that I was falling, that the plane was out of control. And then I must have fainted because the very next thing I knew I was here in this bed and I was told that I'd been rescued after five days in the water and I'm now on an aircraft carrier. And and that's all you know? That's all I know. You have no memory of the crash? No. Uh, you remember how you got out of the plane? No. The, the life belt you were wearing, do you remember inflating it, putting it on? No. Well, how about the five days you spent in the water? I don't remember being in the water. Miss Roberts, uh, look, may, may I say something? Yes, if you like. We have three possibilities here. First, you're not Judy Roberts. I am Judy Roberts. Second, you never got on the plane. I was on the plane. The ticket man at the gate would remember me because I almost missed it, and they held it for me. He put me on board himself. And besides, if I wasn't on that plane, how did I wind up in the water? What's your third possibility? You're lying. About what? You didn't spend five days in the water. Well, where did I spend them? You tell me. I told you. I don't remember. Miss Roberts, it is vital for us to know what happened. Were there any strange noises? There was just this roaring sound. What kind of roar? Oh, it sounded like the engine. But look, how did you survive so long in the water? Surely we can learn something from that. I told you I don't remember being in the water. Well, you don't look as if you've been in the water for five days. Well, that's where your helicopter pilot found me. Now, Lieutenant, if you have no other questions, I would like to rest for a while. All right, Pete. She didn't spend five days swimming in the water. Would the Admiral know how she spent them? She was floating in the water. On what? Her seat was just to the rear of the galley. The portion of it probably broke off and afforded her a kind of raft. The portion may have contained food and canned drinks. She could have had blankets to shield her from the sun. Sir, how does it happen that this so-called raft was never spotted? Well, Lieutenant Miller, who sighted her, says his attention was attracted at first by something shiny that looked like a painted part of a fuselage. Well, why wasn't it there when he arrived? Well, it probably sunk. Mm, yes, sir. It keeps itself and Miss Roberts afloat for five days and suddenly sinks just when rescue comes. Pete, it didn't have to sink suddenly. It may have been sinking slowly all those five days and finally went under just before Miller got there. Yes, sir. Now, Pete, you had raised an excellent question about her physical condition, and we've just been able to account for it. So why aren't you satisfied? Well, why doesn't she remember any of this? Because, as the doctors explained it, it was such a terrible experience, she wants to forget it. Come in. Oh, uh, Miss Roberts, uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to bother you. Then why do you? I, I, I don't know, but... I wish I could believe your story. Lieutenant, it doesn't matter to me whether you do or not. No, I don't believe that either. Because it does matter. You're a girl who's 
Well, quite sensitive to the opinions of other people. Oh, how would you know? I, uh... I understand you're 32 years old. Uh, you live with and support your mother. That tells me something right there. Why? Well, when an unusually pretty girl still lives at home after she's... 30. Really, I don't think that should concern you. <sighs> That's true. I learned also that you're shy, you don't have many friends, and this ten-day trip to London was your first vacation in years. Oh, uh, did you have a good time, incidentally? Oh, yes. yes. I'll bet you didn't. Now, really, Lieutenant, I'm grateful to the Navy for saving my life, but do I have to submit to cross-examination? As if I have guilty knowledge? You'll be leaving us in just a few hours. Judy, tell me, where did you spend the last five days? In the water. I just can't believe it. Well, do you believe that the plane went down? It had to go down. Then where else could I have been? I can't believe you were in the water. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. I'm sorry for you. Why? Your troubles are about to begin. Well, I just didn't ask you if my troubles are over. Judy. Judy, do you realize you are the sole survivor? Uh, you are, aren't you? Yes. Well, you'll find out what that can mean the hard way. You'll be surrounded, hounded, badgered, not just by the press. Oh, they'll drop you soon enough. After all, tomorrow you'll be just yesterday's news. But by friends, uh, the relatives, the loved ones of the other passengers... Did you see my husband? What happened to my wife? Is my daughter really dead? How did you survive? Well, I, 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 I won't know the answers to any of those questions. People won't believe you. Well, they'll, they'll just have to... For years to come, no one will let you alone. Well, there's nothing I can say to anyone. There were 109 other lives on that plane besides yours. Oh. I, I, uh... I didn't think of that. You didn't think of that? Until just now, I... I thought I'd just... You would just what? Well, that I just say nothing. Judy, what do you know? Well, now, now I realize I can't let those people go on grieving. I'll simply have to tell them, because at least they'll be comforted. Why didn't you tell us the truth in the first place? Because I was afraid no one would believe me. But that doesn't matter now. Because I have no choice. I've got to tell the world exactly what happened. It began when we'd just flown high over Bermuda. Well, properly speaking, it will begin when I shall return with Act Two in just a few moments. Some of you strict constructionists might grumble... Why couldn't she tell it to us in the beginning of Act One? To which I have but one answer. It's her story, and she's telling it in her own way. But however it's told, I assure you, it's well worth waiting for. It isn't easy to be a survivor, especially a lone survivor. The only one left alive where 109 others have perished. Or have they perished? Has Judy Roberts successfully survived a disaster which took the lives of everyone else on the plane? Well, obviously she has because she's here. How could she have kept alive for five days in shark-infested waters? At first, Judy says she can't remember. But now, miraculously, she can. We had just flown high over Bermuda, and the pilot's voice came over the PA system. This is Captain Moss again. Uh, we're now flying over the Bermuda Triangle. For more than a hundred years, a graveyard for hundreds of ships and planes. Why did they disappear here? Who knows? Are the reasons supernatural, extraterrestrial? Your guess is as good as mine. I've flown this patch of ocean a thousand times, and I think it's all just an old wives' tale. I just mention it because folks talk about it, and the next time somebody does, you can say, I actually flew over it and nothing happened you to me. You went on and on, now, among the just talking plane, about it, and I here, must have fallen asleep again. And then, uh, well, I wasn't sure. You know how it is in a dream sometimes? You have visions of falling, and it's also real... 
But I knew that I was falling. And I woke up. And it was this terrible war. And I looked out the window. And we were on the water. We were on the water. We must have come down and crashed. But nothing was broken. Nobody was hurt. Everybody seemed paralyzed. And then there was a voice. A woman's voice. It was very soft, very sweet. And it said, Welcome home. Welcome home again to all of you. I didn't know what to think. Were we dead? Were we all killed in the crash? Was this... Was this heaven? And then the voice said, My name is Aura. I'm your guide. Please don't be frightened. Everything is fine. In just a moment or two, you will adjust. You will resume your natural, normal lives as citizens of the city. Everything you think you feel now, all the ties that bind you to the illusory world you've just left, will disappear. You are coming home. Home where you belong. I looked out the window. A bright sun was shining in a deep blue sky. We were somewhere... I didn't know where. It seemed to be a large, lovely park. And there were beautiful pastel-colored buildings. Oh, what a city. What a glorious city. The trip is over. The fantasy ride is over. And all around me, people were getting up and laughing and smiling and talking. I sat in my seat. I didn't know what to do, what to think. Was it all a dream? Finally, everyone had left the plane. I was all alone. What should I do? Why are you still sitting here, my dear? I, uh... I I don't know. The fantasy trip is over. Where am I? Who are you? You're home. Oh, no, please, I'm not home. Uh, My name is Judy Roberts. I live in Miami, Florida. The flight must have had a very traumatic effect on you. What happened to us? We were just an hour out of Miami, and the plane went down. The plane, as you call it, has come home, my dear. Why did everybody just get up and leave? What else are they supposed to do? It's over. But the plane crashed. It fell into the sea. I know. No, no, my dear, cover your No, no, I'm not crazy. I know what happened. Everybody else is crazy. You're very upset. Here, drink this. You'll feel better. You're the very first person who went on a fantasy tour and simply cannot seem to snap out of it. Please, will you humor me? Tell me who I'm supposed to be. My dear, you're a citizen of our city. What city? The city. The city of the people. Which people? The people. Your people. Who am I? Your name is Alla. Where's my mother? Your mother? There's no record of your having a mother. Oh, dear, dear. Uh, Arda, please come in. Hello, Alla, darling. Well, you... You're our pilot. You're Captain Moss. Darling, what are you saying? You're our pilot. The pilot on Flight 7. American International Airlines, Flight 7, London, Miami... We crashed. We went down. Oh, no. No. Oh, why doesn't he remember? Why doesn't he? Because it never happened. Oh, you are Captain Mark. My dear, you're ill. What have you done to us? Who are you? Arda, will you watch over her? Of course. I love her. Let me know if she isn't feeling better. I'll look in on you soon again. Captain Mark. How did it happen? How did all this happen? Listen, Alla. No, my name isn't Alla. And you listen. You're an airline pilot. And I'm a secretary. I live in Miami. Miami? Yes, please. Now, let me talk. We were somewhere between Bermuda and Miami when the plane suddenly went down. It crashed. I don't know why it wasn't destroyed. I don't know why we weren't all killed. Well, it must have been part of the fantasy. But everybody on the plane began acting so strangely. As if they didn't know who they really were. As if they were... Other people. And you, you yourself, you think that you're somebody else. But you're the pilot, you're Captain Moss. 
Who are these people who have seemed to have captured us? No more fantasy trips for you, my sweet. Oh, I can't seem to reach you. Don't you remember? Oh, what a beautiful day. Let's take a stroll. The sun, the air, it'll clear your head. Isn't anybody going to be worried about you? I know my mother will be frantic. I didn't know you had a mother. You never spoke about her. Tell me more. Uh, but not here. In the park. Lovely, how happy everybody is. In all of the universe, is there a city like ours? I wish somehow I could get through to you. Oh, look, look, see the people. Every face here is happy, except yours. I must know what has happened to me. We're so fortunate. We have no hunger, no poverty, no disease. Now, I have an impression from some of the fantasy trips that there are other worlds... Not as lucky as I. Captain Morse. Why do you call me Captain Morse? My name is Arda. You chose it. I... I chose it. When we told Aura we wished to become betrothed, she told us to name each other. I chose Alla for you. You selected Arda for me. You... You really believe all this? <laughs> You've forgotten. We chose each other. We're in love, Alla. But I don't... I'm not... Hey, hey, you're trembling. Oh, my dearest. Let me hold you. Why? Why aren't we in the water? Why aren't we drowned? No, no, my darling. Everything's all right. I'm here. You have nothing to worry about. Oh, I don't know what to think. Hey, look. It's starting to rain. Let's go to the museum. Hurry. Hurry. I don't want you to get wet. <laughs> Isn't this museum a wonderful place? I see the people with their children. One day we'll come here with little ones, too. Captain Moss, listen to me. I am Judy Roberts. I am a secretary. What's that? I take dictation. I type letters. I file correspondence. Why? So that the business can go on. Business? What's business? Well, business has to do with... Oh, please don't make fun of me. No, what... Is business. Oh, how can I explain this? Well, if you have to explain it, it can't be very good. Well, everybody works for one business or another. Why? Would you, uh, to make money. What's money? Oh, 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 you can't be serious. Now, please, my dear, I'm just... Money is what you must have in order to buy things. What sort of things? What sort of things? Well, every sort of thing with the food and clothes and... Whatever you need, whatever you want. But suppose you have no money. But then you, then you do without. Well, how can a person do without food? I don't understand. Well, what do you do here? I paint pictures. I bring them to the museum. People come here and enjoy them. My brother is a farmer. He raises fruit. He brings it to the plaza. People see it. They eat. They enjoy it. But how do things get done? How do you build houses? Everyone does what he knows how to do and shares with everyone. Well, suppose someone takes more than his share. I don't understand. Why would he want to do that? Oh, this, this must be utopia. Oh, why am I fighting this? <laughs> why indeed? Is there a better place? A happier place than our city? Wait, wait a minute there. In that huge space, what's what's in there? Oh, that's the fantasy exhibit. The fantasy exhibit? Yes. Artifacts from fantasy trips. Look. Those are ships. In planes. Well, that's what you want to call them. Look at that ship. That's a naval vessel. A what? Yes, you can read the name. The USS Cyclops. It's a Navy ship that disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle? Yes, you know what it is. You spoke to us about it on the intercom before we crashed. Now, my darling, and you have... see, see. Those Navy planes. Those five old-fashioned Navy planes. You even said what they were. Torpedo bombers. And that freighter, you even told us her name. 
the marine sulfur queen. No. It's no fantasy. Those are real. And I'm real. And you are real. What are we doing here? What is this place? No, Laura, no, don't tell me that again. I don't believe it. I'm not a native of this place who happens to be having hallucinations. Very well, my dear. Suppose you tell me who you are. There's a place in the Atlantic called the Bermuda Triangle. Ships and planes disappear into it. I see. But the ships and the planes are not destroyed. Somehow they... They pass into another world, this world. And when they do, everybody on board changes somehow. Something happens to their minds. Or you do something to their minds, which makes them believe that they belong here and they forget who they were back on Earth. Is that true? You're telling the story. That's what happened to the passengers and the crew of flight number seven. To all of them. All of them except me. My mind didn't undergo any changes. Oh, yes, I... I see that now. Oh, then, then you admit it. Oh, yes. We wish you no harm. Only good. And now that you're here, I'm afraid you must stay. Well, in all matters of this kind... Getting out is always more difficult than getting in. However, considering the way the place is set up, why should she even want to leave? You realize, of course, that she does manage to get back here because back here is where we first met her. How? For that, you must wait my return in just a few moments with Act Three. There's an area in the Atlantic known as the Bermuda Triangle. And why ships and planes disappear there is anyone's guess. What you're listening to now is the story being told by Judy Roberts, sole survivor of a plane that disappeared over the triangle. And she insists that it's a gateway to another world, a world she has become desperate to leave. Please, I must go back. I'm sorry. It can't be done. Well, you brought me here. Why can't you send me back? Well, we've never tried it before. No one has ever asked to leave. I must go back. Why? Look at what you have here. Peace, plenty. It's a paradise. Yes. And most important, love. Who loves you? What man loves you back in your other world? No one. Here? Arda. Very well, I should call him Captain Moss. He loves you, and you love him. I don't... No. You fell in love with each other on the plane. Neither of you knew it. Had you gone on to land in Miami, you would have parted forever. We could feel this love. That's why we brought down your plane, so that your love could, could live. Are you saying that you brought down a plane, 110 people just because of me... And the pilot, but where will you find a better reason than love? But the people, the other people, they will be happier here, too. No, I can't stay. I can't. My mother, she, uh, she's old. Oh, not that old. And she's ill, and she needs me. So does Captain Moss. Well, if I... If I could forget the way all the others did, it would be right for me to stay, but I can't forget. I can't. Whatever it is you do to us, whatever it is you use... It doesn't seem to work with me. And as long as I know who I am, I can't be happy here. In time, perhaps. No, no. Don't take that chance. Th a chance? For your own sake. Every face I see here is smiling. But my face would be the different one. Everybody here is happy. I'm sad. Perhaps I would introduce this unhappiness, this sadness, this discontent into your city. Perhaps because of me, there would be trouble. If you go back, you will live to regret your decision. Oh, I regret it already. But please, please let me go back. 
Oh, my dear, please, please. Even if I'm wrong, I can't help it. That's me. That's how I am. Very well. You see, Lieutenant, there's some kind of thing, a space, a tunnel, whatever I can't say, between the worlds. And they took me to it. And then when they saw a helicopter off in the distance, they knew that I'd be safe. So they just sent me back. And that is what happened. Well, Lieutenant Nelson, can't you say anything? Wow. Is that all you can say? No. No, I can't say this. Stick with your first story. Which story? The one where you just don't remember anything. But I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, you'll never get it to fly. Don't you believe me? Please, don't put me on the spot. Tell me. It, it doesn't matter. The problem is... Look, if you tell that story, people are going to insist you're a nut. But it's true. I won't help you. Look, I was wrong. You were telling the truth the first time when you said you couldn't remember. You're the one who convinced me to tell the truth. And I see now that you were right. I must tell the truth. Admiral, we have to do something. Yes, well, what can we do, Pete? Remember, she's not a prisoner. But look, Admiral... We've got to bring her to shore. And she's free to go. You heard her story. Yes. Would well, you know what will happen when she tells it? Yes. People will say, poor girl, she's undergone such a terrible ordeal. No wonder it affected her mind. <laughs> Judy! Judy! Yes, Mama? Do something about that confounded phone. I can't, Mama. It'll just keep ringing. Well, take the receiver off the hook or something. Oh, go away. We don't want me. Between that phone and that doorbell. Judy, look, fetch me a cup of tea. Yes, Mama. Whatever got into you all of a sudden? Why'd you tell him that that crazy yarn? It happens to be the truth, Mama. Don't you believe me? No, I don't believe you. Even as a little girl, you used to make up stories. Oh, please, Mama. I'm very tired. I'd like to get some rest. Why should you be tired? Please. You haven't worked all week. This thing even cost you your job. What, what are we supposed to do? How are we going to live? How? Tell me how. Oh, Mama, please, please don't please. cry. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, why did you do it? Why did you tell that story? You know why, Mama. I didn't want all those people to grieve. You worried about all them people. But now, who's worried about you? Do they know you lost your job? That you're a prisoner in your own house? Do they? Do they care? Please, please, Mama. I came back here to take care of you. I came back here because I was afraid you couldn't make it by yourself. I gave up everything for you. Why did you ever give up for me? <laughs> you were too shy to go out with boys, too timid to get a job which would make demands on you. And why am I shy, Mama? Why am I timid? It's because of you. I had paradise, Mama. I had utopia in my hands. And I was too frightened to take it. Ah, oh, you're, you're crazy. You, you were in the sun, in the, in the water, too long. Now, now look, you, you just lie down. No, uh, no, I won't. I want to go back. I want to go back, Mama. Go back to the city. Oh, please, Mama. I want to go back. To my city. No, 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 no. Don't cry. No, don't cry, baby. Everything's all right. <laughs> Mama's going to make everything all right. There's nothing further on Judy Roberts' disappearance. She left from the rest home in which she was staying early this evening. Admiral, I think the police could find her if they checked out the local boat yards. Is that so, Lieutenant? Yes. Look, I would say she rented herself a boat, and she's gone out to look for her city again. Now, yeah, there's a possibility. Is there any way the Navy could be interested? No, well, not officially, Lieutenant. You see, we can't search for anyone until after it's assumed they're on the water or in it. 
And then we have to be asked to order. Yes, I was afraid of that. Are you qualified in torpedo boats? What? Uh, uh, no, no, sir. Well, if you want to log in some time... Oh, yes, I, I understand, sir. As a matter of fact, I might just come along for the ride. Not a sign of her, sir. I also ordered the air patrols to keep an unofficial eye out, but we don't even know if she's out here. Well, the boatyard people described her pretty well. If she's this far out, she's in trouble if we don't find her. She can't have enough fuel to come back. Admiral, she doesn't want to come back. Well, if she doesn't, we really have no right to compel her. Of course, if she's out of fuel and food and water and in danger of sinking. And ill, besides. Admiral, huh? look, up ahead. Dead ahead. Is that a small boat? Steady. Hold it steady. Yeah, that's good. Look, that's her. There, she's lying on the boat. Hold it steady there. Corman, I need some blankets and something hot to drink. I'll go into the boat and get her. All right, let's do it quickly, Pete. I don't like the shape of those clouds. Hold that boat steady. Judy. Oh, oh no. Go away. Overboard. Oh, that's crazy. Listen, listen. Can you hear it? Did you hear it? That roar. That roar that I told you about. I heard it on the plane. We're falling. Ah, we're falling. Don't you feel it? Something wrong with the boat. We must have been swamped. We're being pulled down. i got to get you up on deck. we got to get out of here. No, no, no. I'm back. I'm really back. According to the papers and the broadcasts, a torpedo boat went down in a violent storm with all hands. It's true, the storm raged in the area of the Bermuda Triangle, but, well, what does that mean? Ships and planes have a habit of disappearing. So do I. But only for a few moments. I, at least, shall return shortly. The Bermuda Triangle. Fact or fiction? Myth or reality? Everything you've heard on our show, every way of accounting for it, or not accounting for it, has been the subject of lengthy debate. Is it the passage to another world? Some insist it is. Is it the playground of a superior race of men who amuse themselves with us mere mortals? There are those who believe it. Our cast included Mercedes McCambridge, Paul Hecht, Bryna Rayburn, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
Tonight's WOR Mystery Theater was brought to you in part by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less. The preceding program is furnished by CBS Radio.